Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Testimony continuing very soon in an emotional trial for one East Point family with a man accused of killing his own cousin and putting her body in a dumpster. Thank you for joining us this noon. I'm Rhonda Walker. I'm Jason Colthorpe. The past week has been shedding more light into what happened before Zion Foster's disappearance. Jalen Brazier, Foster's cousin, says he was not responsible for her death. Before today's hearing starts, our Sean Lay joins us live with what's been playing out in court so far. Sean? Rhonda, we also want to remind everyone why we're here every day and why we're on the Zion Foster case really from the start here. Any missing person is such an important case, especially here in Detroit. So many girls go missing and in this case, Zion's body has never been found. Let me take you inside the courtroom here. Her favorite cousin, Jalen Brazier, facing a murder charge and tampering with evidence charge from prosecutors. They say he killed Zion Foster when he brought her to his home on the west side to watch TV, smoke marijuana, and he left the room, he says, came back, and he said Zion was suddenly dead. What stands out this week is the Brazier's words himself speaking to police in an interview in the days following the missing situation with Zion Foster. So calm, so cold, calm and cool, he describes how Zion was dead, he says, and he didn't do anything. She was on a couch for a while and didn't call her mom, didn't call his girlfriend who was uh, expecting with their children. His kids were upstairs, didn't call 911, no life-saving efforts. And at 2 a.m., he says he picked her up, took her outside, put her in his trunk, and very calm and coolly, he tells police he admits he dumped her body in a dumpster in Highland Park. However, he says he has nothing to do with Zion's death. So prosecutors there building this case piece by piece without any remains here. And when we go back upstairs today, we expect to hear a lot about DNA evidence. That will be key in this, but again, no remains found. We all remember that extensive search of a landfill. So very tough. Also, we, uh, I'll be speaking with Zion's mother. I check in with her every single day. She's monitoring this as well, and she did testify. It's extremely hard for her to hear all these details and some things she says that were missed that could have helped from the very beginning. Guys. All right, Sean, thank you. And for anyone that wants to follow along with all of the testimony that's unfolding in court, we stream this trial every day on Local 4 Plus and click on Detroit.com and then join us on First at Four with Karen Drew, where we'll have updates right up to the verdict. New at noon, we now have a trial date in the murder case of Samantha Wall, a prominent leader in the Detroit Jewish community. She was found stabbed to death outside of her Detroit apartment last October. The prosecutor has charged Michael Jackson Belenos with her murder. He was in court this morning and he'll be going on trial June 10th. Oak Park police are looking for a suspect in connection to a possible hate crime. Police say a white man with a long, dark beard driving a dark, dark blue Chevy Traverse yelled anti-Semitic remarks at two women. This was back on May 2nd. He also threw some work gloves at them. We say that because maybe it jogs your memory if you remember seeing this incident or even that dark blue Chevy Traverse with Michigan plates. Give Oak Park police a call. If you are an Ascension patient, it's not business as usual. There are few things that you're being encouraged to bring with you as the hospital is recovering from a cyber attack. Ascension is asking patients to bring all of your notes on your symptoms as well as any current medications that you are taking. Bring all of that to your appointment. Don't assume that the hospital system has that access to your information. Ascension says that some non-emergency elective procedures and tests and appointments have temporarily been paused while they work to get things back online. There's 140 hospitals and some senior living facilities in 19 states impacted, including those right here in Metro Detroit. Ascension has brought in a third party expert to help with the investigation and has also notified law enforcement. One of the men charged but eventually found not guilty in the plot to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer is now running to be a Michigan sheriff. The Detroit News reports Eric Molitor has filed paperwork to run for the Wexford County Sheriff. That's the Cadillac area over on the west side of the state. Molitor will face incumbent Trent Taylor in the Republican primary in August. 
It is the return many donut lovers have been waiting for for years. And people, in fact, were lining up as early as 5.30 this morning before that 6 a.m. opening time as they wanted to get their hands on some Dutch Girl Donuts for the first time in years. That iconic shop on Woodward is back open after shutting down in 2021 after the owner passed away. It's been closed ever since. That is until this morning. It recently came under new ownership but kept much of the same staff. So you know that means that the donuts are just as good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear any complaints no, when Kim was no. out there. The Detroit Lions are ready for a fresh start. The team is going to be seeing its new players in action as rookie minicamp gets underway today. That'll of course include Terrion Arnold, Ennis Rakestraw Jr., and Christian Mahogany. I'm starting to think they drafted these guys based on their colorful names. Uh, that's uh, some of the undrafted free agents will also be there and there's some buzz around those guys. Uh, we've also learned that Coach Dan Campbell won't be there for personal reasons, but we'll have a full wrap up on everything tonight at five and six. The Tigers ready to wear their new City Connect uniforms tonight when they play the Houston Astros at Comerica. And the Tigers and Nike are also hosting a couple of block parties ahead of today and tomorrow's game right outside of Comerica Park. And it gets underway at four o'clock this afternoon until seven today. Like and then those they also jerseys. have one tomorrow before the game as yeah. well. You know, those outdoor parties outside of Comerica Park are a ton of fun. <laughs> Today's block party might be the one you would want to go to, might Ashley. Be. I'm, I'm oh, guessing. Although yeah. the weather for Saturday. Is it changing again? No, it's not a washout, okay. but there's just some rain chances. Today, you're not going to see a raindrop okay. at that party, and we'll be a little warmer today, too. So I do think that today would be the pick day to head to that block party outside of Comerica Park. But 64 degrees in the city. We have some blue skies peeking through some of those puffy white clouds. 60 in Howell, 61 in Lapeer, 59 in Monroe. Northwesterly winds about 5 to 15 miles per hour, and so a little breezy, but even with that northwesterly flow not making us any cooler than we were yesterday, we're actually a smidge warmer. So so averaging out about five degrees warmer across the metro area, only a degree or two up into the thumb. But we have the sky cover that's cleared out, so the sunshine to thank for that little bit of a warm up. Now, the rain that we dealt with yesterday, well off to the east, and that is now into a good portion of Pennsylvania, New York. But up towards Thunder Bay, Duluth, some of that rain beginning to develop. This is the next system, the low pressure that will roll through our area tomorrow, bringing much better change, chances for rain tomorrow morning and then kind of spotty into the afternoon. Otherwise, we'll be in the mid-60s this afternoon, partly sunny skies. We'll take a closer look at that Mother's Day weekend forecast in just a moment. Looking forward to that.